Paul Singer is undoubtedly one of the most feared and powerful men on Wall Street. Singer was born in 1944 and grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, one of three children of a Manhattan pharmacist and a homemaker. He was a good student and obtained his BS in psychology from University of Rochester in 1966 and a JD from Harvard Law School in 1969. In 1974, Singer went to work as an attorney in the real estate division of the investment bank Donaldson, Lufkin, and Charrette, which was, which was bought out in 2000 by Credit Suisse for $11.5 billion. Singer left the investment bank in 1977 to start his own investment firm and started, and started Elliott with $1.3 million in seed capital from friends and Singer left the investment bank in 1977 to start his own investment firm and started Elliott Fund with $1.3 million in seed capital from, from friends and family. He made big trades doing what is called convertible arbitrage. This is a technique to manipulate stock prices by selling short and making the price drop. This drop in the common stock made the convertible stocks drop as well so that they can either make money closing the short positions when the stocks drop or locking a better interest on the convertible bonds which are fixed income financial products. He owns both Elliott which is registered in the United States and NML Capital which is a subsidiary registered in the Cayman Islands which is a tax haven. His strategy is an active one. This means He buys big stakes in companies in order to take power and make changes that would make the price of the stock rise, such as buybacks. Otherwise, he buys big stakes in companies that are about to be acquired so that he can obstruct the purchase process until he gets paid a big premium to let the deal go further. I will name some of his largest deals. In 2003, he owned lots of preferred stocks in Wella, a hair products company about to be acquired by Procter Gamble. He, along with other funds, opposed the offer for the preferred stocks made by Procter Gamble until, until the company was forced to raise the offer to make the deal go ahead. Another major deal was when Swiss human resources giant Adecco announced in January 2006 that they had bought a 35% stake in this AG at a price of 54.5 euros per share, making an offer at that same price for all shares. Elliott, along with other hedge funds, bought big in this AG and after a trial pushed Adeco to offer 113 euros per share, more than doubling the previous offer. In 2012, Elliott announced they bought a big stake in oil explor exploration and production firm, Hess. They pushed the management to disinvest in some ventures in order to focus on the core business. In 2014, Hess was the hedge fund's main position. Other notorious deals were in Telecom Italia, one of the main communications companies in Italy, and Pernod Ricard, one of the largest alcoholic beverage producers. They also made big deals in Alcoa, the third aluminium producer in the world, where Elliott gained three board seats and later sold its position at a, at a 104% profit. Another field where Paul Singer did heavily invest were distressed national bonds. When Argentina defaulted on its debt, Elliott owned around $600 million worth of bonds. They refused the offer to receive 70% less of the nominal value from the Argentinian government. And after years of trials, legal fights and the seizure of an Argentinian Navy vessel in Ghana, he received $1.6 billion from Argentina. Elliott bought $20 million worth of credit and Congo did not maintain its promise to pay back the money. So he had a legal fight that saw him get around $90 million after both the principal and the damages got paid.
another main reason why he he and his fund is so well known is because he got to own AC Milan, one of the most victorious soccer teams in the world. Elliot landed the money to Yong Hong Lee, a Chinese investor who wasn't able to pay back due to the terrible season the team had. You see, in European soccer there's a rule called financial fair play. It prohibits clubs to spend way beyond their limits. They have to spend based on their revenue and you can't simply pump money in. Due to the bad results of AC Milan, they couldn't sign relevant players and missed the Champions League qualification, so they had much less revenue. This year they had a terrible start, but since Ibrahimovic got back, they started gaining some more points, but they are still quite far from the relevant positions in the Italian Championship. What we think is that Elliot will hold AC Milan as long as it reaches good results so that they'll be able to sell it at an extraordinary price tag. He donated several million dollars both to Bush and Trump for their presidential campaigns. This is it for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet and like the video because it's very important since we just started out. If you want to support us, you can do it either through PayPal or by doing your regular shopping on Amazon after clicking one of the links down below. I wish you all a good day and see you the next time.